Hey, Jake here. Uh, I want to talk to you today about the ideal normalized prescription. But before we start, if you're new to all this, if this is the first time you hear the word normalized prescription, this is definitely not the place to start. You don't want to mess around with this until you understand how to measure your eyesight, uh, until you've had a differential prescription for close-up. So this is kind of a, an advanced topic. I'm posting it out in the open as opposed to in the program because it applies to a fair amount of people who use the blog alone without any additional help from my program. So that's for those of you who are courageous in using the blog. Uh, just uh, stick with it and follow these tips. I get asked a fair amount, what is the right normalized prescription? If you wear uh, five diopter glasses that the optometrist prescribed, you already know that if you went for four diopters, it doesn't mean everything would be blurry. It means you could see clearly less far away than you could see with the minus five. So as you reduce the diopters, the bubble of clear vision shrinks. That's why we call it the diopter bubble. So if you used a minus three, you might only be able to see clearly as far as your computer screen. And when you use the minus five, you can see clearly all the way to theoretically infinity. So you could see better than 2020 on an eye chart. Now, the normalized prescription is intended to give you clear vision. You absolutely want clear vision, but you want a blur challenge at a distance where it's helpful. The idea that being is that your eye is dynamic, your eye adjusts based on stimulus. And to get stimulus, you need both. You need clear vision, you need a little bit of blur so you can use active focus. So now the question is, how much do you want to reduce your normalized prescription from your full prescription before? And as I've said before, and as Alex, who's an actual doctor, has said before, uh, it depends on your preference. And preference there being is how far do you want clear vision before there's blur? But there is a better answer than that very general one, which is 2050. 2050 is the number that you want to aim for or the number that I aim for uh, in most cases. And the way this works is this. You get an eye chart, you post it inside of your house in good natural lighting on a wall, and you aim for getting 2050 vision on that indoor eye chart that is naturally lit. That's the ideal scenario. Now I know that involves some effort, but if you want to get it right, if you want the answer to the right normalized prescription, this is the way to get there. Some more disclaimers here. You don't want to start with this, right? This is probably not your first normalized prescription necessarily, where you really probably are going to aim for 2030 or at most 2040. But once you're used to this, and another, another disclaimer, definitely are not going to use this for driving or anything where the government or otherwise legally you're required to have 2020 vision. So let's say you're past your first normalized, you want the ideal number and I say it's 2050. And here's why. When you're outside in good natural sunlight in the shade, that indoor 2050 vision turns into something closer to 2040, 2030, possibly even close to 2020 if you're really using active focus. 2030, 2040 though, which is a good blur distance for outdoors where you tend to see clearly more far away because most objects that you're looking for are relatively further away than they would be indoors. So what happens is when you wear the 2050, you go outside, now you can see 2040, 2030, perhaps even better on some occasions. Most objects outdoors are further away than objects indoors. So now when you come back inside with that 2050, your diopter bubble shrinks because there's less available ambient light indoors than there's outdoors on a nice sunny day. So now you can see clearly less far 
but most indoor objects where you would be using active focus are also closer to you. So say you're taking a walk outside, you're looking at street signs, you're looking at uh, car license plates, you're looking around, you're, you're using active focus, that 2050 should work pretty well because now you've got 2040, 2030 perhaps. But now you go indoors into a shopping mall, now your adopter bubble has shrunk a bunch, but everything you read, all the shop signs and everything else is much, much closer. So in effect, you're still getting active focus challenge, you still have blur at the right amount of distance. If you use a much stronger prescription, if you use something that you can see 2030 with indoors, now you go outside, you got 2020, you've got better than 2020 vision, it's hard to get a blur challenge. The other reason I say don't use this the first time is because you have to be really comfortable with active focus, you have to get to a point where you expect the experience, you enjoy the experience, the experience is part of your habits, and it's not something that is jarring. You know, if you go from a 2020 or better prescription straight to a 2050, you won't have a good experience. It's going to be much harder for you to acclimate to it. Your brain's not going to like it. And what you want is not to over challenge your vision. You want to have fun with it. So you start with a 2030, maybe 2040 at most. And then the second normalize, when you really feel ready for it, you might go for the 2050. Also of note, this is not true for everyone. Some people like a little bit less, some people like a little bit more. We are all different. But if you want a guideline, if you want to know what worked best for me and what worked best for a lot of my clients, 2050 is really that number. Now the next question is how do you get a 2050 prescription? There are several ways for this most of which I discussed in the program. So if you want a lot more detail on this and if you want support on this, uh, use the program. Back to 2020, you can sign up to my free email guide and get the link from there. Uh, but the short version is, if you have, if you're using contact lenses, you can just get a bunch of plus lenses, reading glasses, from the convenience store. Uh, you would really want them in 0.25 diopter increments, and you would want them anywhere from half a diopter to two diopters for most people. Now that's a bunch of reading glasses, but they're really cheap. So you can wear your contact lenses, you can put a half diopter pair of reading glasses over it, and now look at the eye chart indoors. If you can still read 2050 too easily, it's a little bit too strong. So you go up, because remember, plus lenses, reading glasses, are the opposite of your myopia glasses, which are minus glasses. So if you have a minus three and you put plus half diopter reading glasses in front of it, now it's only minus 2.5, smaller diopter bubble. Pretty simple stuff. So if you can still see clearly too much of the chart, then you just increase the reading glass prescription until you're at 2050. That's a pretty easy way to do it. You can also do it by putting reading glasses over your regular glasses, which is less than ideal. Um, also less than ideal, reading glasses are generally pretty low quality, so your results are really just approximate. Um, you can use a test lens kit, which is a much better option, but you'll only need it a couple of times. Unless you have high astigmatism, unless you're really high myopia, you're not going to get a whole lot of use out of a test lens kit. On the other hand, they're just $100, $150, and they're a proper setup, the same as your optometrist tends to use. Uh, so you can get one of those, and then you're not fiddling around with, with reading glasses. You can order those online. Uh, I have several links on the site. I'll post some of those below as well. And But again, as I mentioned in the beginning, you don't, you don't want to start here. You want to start with all this stuff before. You want to start with measuring your eyesight, your differential prescription, you want to get active focus, but when you've accomplished all of those things and you want to challenge your distance vision a little bit all the time, right? You're, you're walking outside, you get 2030, 2040, it's perfect to read those car license plates, and then you're walking into the subway station, you see the ads in the subway station much closer, but much less light, you're still getting that active focus challenge. So I'm a big fan of 2050. Um, of course, this is not advice. 
Uh, only optometrists are allowed to write prescriptions and give prescription advice, so this is just a philosophical talk we're having here. And whatever you choose to do is whatever you choose to do. I am not giving you advice here because of course the only advice that is legally allowed to be given is wear the strongest prescription possible and you have to get that from an optometrist. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this one. Uh, give it a thumbs up if you like. We're not quite yet popular on YouTube, which is all right, but I like to see whether you enjoy these and I much appreciate your comments and the likes. Thanks.